You know what you're looking at right there? That's a hat. That's a hat that has the title to the number four song in the nation in the singing news magazine from the old time preachers quartet. I sang myself happy. It's a hat. But not just a regular old run-of-the-mill hat. It's a hat with the number four song <clears throat> in America. Right there. So, you better get these while they last. Because as soon as it goes number one, this $15 hat is going to go down to about $5. <laughs> Oh, there's so much. It's funny. There's so much truth in that, though. But uh, go get you one. Oldtimepreacherquartet.com. Go to the store and uh, bang zoom. There you go. Oh, uh, let's see here. <clears throat> yes, by the way, if you hadn't heard, sure enough, I sing myself happy. Charts came out for Singing News today. Number four in the nation. I don't know if you saw my, uh, oh, here's my little my little sketch I did. I did a little Facebook thing an hour or so ago, and I showed everybody a picture of my face when I saw the chart when I opened up the computer, and this is what I looked like. And underneath it, I wrote what I said. I said, what? I really did ask my son. He was in the studio next to me. <coughs> I'm not kidding. We're speechless. We're speechless. So, wow. And uh, thank you to uh, Rebecca Peck and Diane Wilkinson for writing a hit song. Man, we just hope we halfway did it good enough to make them happy because um, they're the best. I mean, you know, you got a handful of writers I consider the best. Kyla's one, Rebecca, of course, and Diane. And, um, you know everybody. You know I love um, Larry. Love Larry. I'll tell you, Lisa Williamson's a fine writer. There's a few, man. But Rebecca and Diane... <laughs> that's tall cotton. And the fact that they have uh, given us multiple songs for our two albums as a quartet. And uh, Rebecca has written songs for my new record, my new solo record. That I, I, she, she could have got way better than me <laughs> to, to do it. I'm just glad she did. And we're thankful and thank them. And, and Bob Sellers, who no longer sings lead with the quartet, busy doing his solo thing, and we support that. And we, we've sent him leads, and <laughs> I'm getting ready to work on his new radio single for him. And, um, you know, it's, it's all good there. And Bob sang lead on that song, and my goodness, Bob Sellers is a lead singer. And a mighty fine one with a range that's absolutely silly. We thank him. For his contribution, sure enough. And then Adam and uh, Tim and Mike and myself, thank you. So thank you to uh, fans who's asked for it and radio stations who's playing it. And wow, we're just absolutely speechless is the bottom line. So, all right. So here's a few more things I want you to do. Then we get into our show for today. And tomorrow, it may be in the morning, Saturday, uh, you know, normally Saturday I go at, come at you normally about three or four in the afternoon. It might be late tomorrow morning. I'm going to have... Um, Rebecca Peck on with me, and I'm going to do a, a, a special show on Rebecca and her music with the quartet and with me, and it's um, I'm looking forward to it. So check it out tomorrow, okay? Maybe in the morning. Okay, uh, Christmas time, uh, Camp Meeting the Smokies, December 7, 8, 9. Um, here's a number, call. We want uh, senior adult classes. It's a perfect vacation, a little Christmas getaway, Monday through Wednesday. Um, Perfect for a senior adult class, 865-278-3681, 865-278-3681. Please call. 
in uh, be the Old Time Preachers Quartet, myself, Barry Rowland in Deliverance, Bob Sellers, speaking of Bob, Sacred Harmony, Sherry Taylor, Chelsea Estes, Covenant, Paul Bolin, and uh, hopefully we're going to add some others here in the next uh, very few weeks. Um, okay, and then a couple weeks ago, the blessings continue here. Uh, the Diamond Awards from Scoops Magazine, they came out, and we have a bunch of folks that I produce and that's on my label that I work with that are up for a bunch of awards, including the Williamson's up for Mixed Group of the Year, Lisa up for Female Vocalist of the Year, she's up for Songwriter of the Year, their single Every Moment, Every Mountain, Every Mile, up for Song of the Year, Good Night, it's awesome. Uh, Heart to Heart, Sunrise Trio of the Year, and their video uh, is up for Video of the Year, Sons of Uncle Sam. Great patriotic video. Good night. It's great. And then um, in the Bluegrass category, uh, Bluegrass Gospel Song of the Year, Most Requested Prayer by Heaven's Mountain Band, uh, Male uh, Artist of the Year, Roger Johnson and Rodney Johnson, a father-son team tagging up there, um, being nominated. Uh, female Vocalist of the Year, Deborah Johnson of Heaven's Mountain Band, and then the Bluegrass Group of the Year, Heaven's Mountain Band. So just, again, just incredibly blessed there. And uh, lo and behold, your old buddy Les is up for two awards. And so if you want to vote for those folks and there's room for me, great, vote for me. If not, you got others in those categories you want. I don't blame you. They're no doubt better than I am. But I am up for the Paul Heil Award for Broadcasting and J.D. Sumner Living Legend Award. Go figure that. Um... So, anyway, you can Google Scoops Magazine online, and there you go. You will be on your way to voting, and we would sure appreciate you voting for the uh, folks on my label that I'm so blessed to produce and work with. And then one more. Jot down this toll-free number. Please do this for me. It's not going to cost you a penny. This isn't a sales pitch of any kind. And there's no money involved. Uh, 800-360-5051. 800-360-5051. I want you to call and tell me who you think is going to win the favorite bass vocalist in the Singing News Fan Awards this year. Now, there are five in that uh, category, and they include Pat Barker of The Guardians, Eric Bennett of The Triumphant Quartet, Randy Bird of The Mark Trammell Quartet, Jeff Chapman of The Kingdom Heirs, and Matt Fouch of Legacy Five. Now, want you to vote for who you think will win. And I also want you to add one name. Who you, who do you think they missed as a favorite bass singer for this year's Fan Awards? Call, give me your name, where you're from, who you think will win, who you think they missed. And I'm going to put you in my nationally syndicated, daily syndicated radio show in Southern Gospel music all around the country. And that number is 800-360-5051. Okay. So we've been uh, we started looking at this magazine from the Singing News back in December of 2010, and uh, you see the Triumph of Court there, and it's a Christmas cover, and you think um, you know, okay, oh, oh, Les has lost his marbles. It's 125 degrees outside, and he's talking Christmas covers and c Christmas magazines. Well, here's why I got this one up. Uh, I've been working for the Singing News and running the, the radio network for a decade prior to this. And working for the magazine and writing for them, director of business operations, just doing a bunch of different things. But uh, this is the year they uh, hired me to as the top rung of the ladder, the publisher. That's the top position in, within a magazine. And so this was the issue. That was my first as the publisher of the magazine. And so um, we uh, we kind of talked to I talked to Eric Bennett of the Triumphant Quartet uh, earlier this week, and we talked about uh, what they're doing, and then. Um, I always go into each issue and we kind of take a look at some things. And so the thing that struck me here was the open letter from Taranda Green. Now, this was just after Tony Green Green had passed. And uh, so I thought, okay, we're going to do uh, tonight's on Taranda Green Bean. Don't you love that name? Taranda Green Bean. You can't make this stuff up. So uh, anyway... Uh, One of the greatest sopranos in the history of Southern gospel music. Man, maybe the greatest. She is such an incredible, incredible, incredible singer. Now, I like her older stuff better. And, of course, that's not going to be a newsflash to anyone because I'm the traditional guy. Um, but... Uh, if she sings the songbook, I, whatever, she's... 
What a what a soprano. And so I saw her open letter here where she's thanking people for praying for her and her family at uh, Tony's passing and talking about, you know, there'll be changes in the greens coming up and no telling what, you know, the Lord's going to be uh, uh, leading her. But I thought I'm going to play some greens music and I'm going to play some Taranda music too here in a little bit. But I want to go back to some early greens that was before Taranda. We're going to ramp up to Taranda, so all you Taranda fans, don't get all mad. And and I thought this was going to be about Taranda. I'm, we're going to play some Taranda music. But I'm going to go old school greens first. I'm talking about old school. Let's see. I tell you what, I'm going to play a song that my wife and I have sung well, since this came out in 1980, what is this, 1986, what is it, 96, 06, 16, 34 years, my wife and I have sung this song, and it is a great song. And after this song, I'm going to take a look at who's on with us, and we're going to talk, uh, talk to them here in uh, just a little bit. But let me try to find where this song is here on the, uh, on the old Victrola here. Let me try to get as close as I can. There we go. It's called When He Sees Me. Oh, I love this song. When he sees me, when he sees you as a child of God, you know what? He sees the blood of the Lamb. Aren't you Looking thankful for that? Down through the ages, God beheld the dying soul. Sin had brought separation, never more could man. as white as snow. Isn't that good news? The Lamb of God is worthy. 
Isn't that good? I love that song. My wife and I, again, have sung that for 34 years now when he sees me. And we're talking to Randy Green. You say, what do you mean we're talking to Randy Green? Randy Green wasn't on that. No, the Greens were. And this is Facebook Live with Les. Since it's got my name on it, I'm going to play what I want to play. We got Taranda coming up. It'll be all right. Facebook Live with Les, Southern Gospel Music, memorabilia, memories, and ministry. So a little memorabilia today is just this little vinyl right here in the old singing news that I've got. But uh, isn't that colorful? Tim and Tony, and of course that is Kim Green Hopper. We got a green hopper and we got a green bean here amongst all of that. There's Dad up there, Everett. Played the piano for the greens. All right, let's see who's with us. And then we're going to play a green song that has trend. And then we're going to play one of her solo songs. Let's see who's here with us. Well, my Aunt Sue's on there. You know she's going to be on there. Patty Graham from Ohio. Woohoo! Congratulations. Thank you. She's talking about the Old Time Preachers Quartet number four song. Just came out today. <coughs> my sinuses are killing me. Y'all got any kind of allergy thing going on? It's killing me. Big Mo, congratulations on the number four. Thank you, sir. Ken Williams, been playing it. Thank you, sir. Andrew Burnett, hey, buddy. Andrew Burnett, shared on Southern Gospel Music today, SGM today. Love you, buddy. Thank you, Andrew. Appreciate that. You got my vote. Well, that's very kind. I guess Andrew's talking about the Diamond Awards. That uh, is on, uh, you can go online, Google... Um, Scoops Magazine, and right there on the main page, you can uh, just click on the Diamond Awards and vote. And I've got a bunch of folks that I produce, and that's on uh, my uh, family music group label. Uh, Williamson's, Heaven's Mountain Band, Heart to Heart. Uh, they're up for a bunch of awards, and I'm up for two. And so, Andrew voted. Uh, I think it looked like you voted for me, Andrew. That's kind of you. Thank you. Then we got uh, Jeff Chapman. He was up there somewhere. I don't know. I, I lost his. Hey, buddy. Man, Jeff sang bass with the Old Time Preachers Quartet a couple weeks ago uh, when Mike was uh, preaching a revival in Pennsylvania, and we were singing at the uh, Hominy Valley Sing with the Primitive Quartet in Good Night of Living. He knocked it out of the ballpark with the bases loaded. I'm talking about a full-on grand slam, and then he ran around the bases backward. That's what I'm talking about. Hey, Jamie. Oh, Middle Tennessee Baptist Jamie, David Stewart, James Barber. Never heard this song, but I really like it, James. This is a great song. And by the way, just so you know, it's a great album, folks. Hunt it down. This is probably my favorite Greens record of all time. All right, uh, David Stewart says the Greens first heard him in 93 or 94 at a concert with the Kingsman. That was a good time back then. B.T. Thomas, good to see you. Yes, that is a young green hopper, Kim Green Hopper on that cover there, uh, Andrew. Uh, hello, Gene uh, Thorne, David Stewart, nice album, man, it's great. Hey, Jim McComas, fine preacher, fine singer. Come back to Nashville, let's go get, let's go break some bread. Brian Epinette and uh, Brian Hoffman, happy Friday. Les, still love them greens, I do too. And uh, had a blast, man, Jeff, thank you. Again, really, truly, I mean sincerely, thank you. I appreciate you stepping in and helping out. My goodness. Wow. <laughs> kind of like asking if you have a baseball team and somebody went down, you had to go get somebody, and, and you called Babe Ruth, and, the, and Babe said, yeah, I'll come over and bat for you. <laughs> oh, yes, it was. Well done. And I love the reverence that he showed toward uh, Mike Holcomb, who is... You know he's the greatest bass singer ever. I'm just saying. Jeff, you understand? You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> All right, let's, uh, let's hear another Green song. Let's go to uh, the Shout Project of 2003. <coughs> Excuse me while I hack sinuses. Uh, this is the, the Shout Project they did for several years. They, they put the top 30 songs of the entire year onto one project every year and sent it to bookstores. This one looked like that right there. You got Rex, you got Gerald, you got Claude, you got Ivan. That was Shout 2004. And um, so, uh, the Greens had one of those top 30 songs. 
Let me try to find it here. Uh oh, I may have put the wrong disc in here. I sure did. Let me do this. Go, buddy, Les. You need to pray for him. He's lost his mind. Here, I'll show you. I'll show you what my face looked like a while ago whenever I opened up the computer and it said, uh, the singing news said, the old time preacher's quartet, I sang myself happy, was the number four song of the nation. Here's what my face looked like. I said, what? I went, what? Right there, that's what I look like. <laughs> okay, so now let's play this green song. And then I'm going to play a song from Taranda's solo album called Stronger. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's go to cut number 11, shall we? Cut number 11. The Greens. His blood no longer leaves a stain. Here's another blood song. Your old buddy Les loves blood songs. Greens. Facebook Live with Les.
blood no longer leaves a stain. Would you love blood songs? They did that when I knelt the blood fell. Another great blood song. My goodness. Oh, that's one of my favorite blood songs ever is that one. But there you go. Uh, Taranda being featured there with the greens. Now I'm going to play. Uh, something from a Taranda solo CD as we're kind of featuring Taranda. And the reason we're doing that is, well, I've got this issue out right here. I'm going to talk to you here. Some of the folks that's on want to see your names here. But uh, this December 2010 issue was the issue that I was uh, first made publisher of the Singing News Magazine. And so this was my first issue as publisher. I've been working with them for over, I don't know, 10 years or more than that, actually. Uh, but at this point, I... Uh, assumed the top position of publisher. And this was the first issue of that magazine. And so I just wanted to feature that one. And um, on page eight here, there was an open letter from Taranda. This just after uh, Tony's death. So I thought, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll feature some Taranda music. But before we go to uh, a song from her solo CD, let me keep reading who we got him. Let's see, uh, Glenda and Phil Platter. Good to see you all. It was Amy Lambert then. Amy was singing that? Amy was great. Maybe so. Jim McComas, thumbs up. James Barber, congrats on the song that is charting. James, wow. We are humbled to say the very, very least. Glenn Miller, love your band. Jeff Chapman, very dear friend, Mike. I know, I know. But uh, still, thank you for... Uh, um, what you shared in, in relationship to, uh, to Mike. We appreciate it. David Stewart. Hey, Jeff. Nancy Truett. Good to see y'all. Brian Hoffman. You are a bass singing machine, Jeff. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Tim Caldwell's watching. Speaking of bass singing machines, Tim Caldwell can sing bass, man. And what a quartet. Good night. Yes, James Barber. Now listen here. Okay, I'm going to get on a soapbox for a minute. And Jeff, if you're still on here, you can wait. You, you, I'm not asking you to pat yourself on the back, but you've got, you can tell me some numbers. You can help me here. Um, I th I've thought for years, after Mike left the road, Mike Holcomb, uh, that Jeff should, should, have, should be winning bass singer of the year sometime. I know we've always had great bass singers. I'm not saying every year. But, I mean, he should always be in the top five, period. Just period. Period. And he should win his share. And um, Jeff, what, how, how many, when was the first year you made the top five? Can you give me that? I'd love to know that, Jeff. And you're not bragging on yourself. And you're not throwing anybody under no, any buses. I'm just asking a question. When was the first year you made the top five in the Singing News Magazine for favorite bass vocalists? Please answer my question. I just got to know that. Uh, while you're doing that, Tommy Swindle. Hey, Tommy. Man, what a great singer. Great songwriter, Tommy. He's working with a great quartet, too, by the way. Living Faith Quartet. Wonderful, man. Speaking of bass singers, um, Mark Bird, great bass singer for that group. Man, we got bass singers in Southern Gospel music. Linwood Wilson, good to see you. Glenn Robinson, yeah. I don't have Miracle in me with me, Andrew. I'm sorry. Tabitha Moore, son. We had a tracking session in Nashville, Tennessee yesterday on her new album that absolutely would have knocked your head. <clears throat> Losing my voice. Did you hear that? Did my voice just stopped talking. <clears throat> um, would have knocked your hat in the creek if you were wearing a hat. Bluegrass. She can write and she is a song bird. Oh, man. Can she sing. And we are cutting a record that Bluegrass is going to pay attention to and go, what? Here. This is what their face is going to look like after they hear the record. What? <laughs> James Barber. Yes, Green's had some fantastic lineups. Boy, did they ever. 
Nicholas Wilkie, well, he likes bass singers. Good to see you, Nicholas. Patty, well, glory. She's liking those blood songs. Shout CDs were good. They sure were. Lee McNeil, speaking of bass singers, you know, Lee's not too bad. He's a pretty good bass singer, to be honest with you. He was our first lead singer in the Old Time Preachers Quartet. <clears throat> he has a great range. Now, we did have to pitch things kind of low. Nonetheless, he still had a great range. And as a matter of fact, he was the lead vocalist on our first ever top 10 song. I'll ride this ship to the shore. Went up to number six in the Singing News magazine. So, Lee, you don't have the record anymore. Your old hairy-legged preacher boys have the number four song in the nation right now, if you can believe that. I am not kidding, Lee. David Stewart, 1993. Nicholas Wilkie in the house. <laughs> That's funny. Hey, John Campanelli. Hey, here's my father-in-law, D. Kent Nelkins. Hello, D. Kent Nelkins. Good to see you. I love Kim Green, yeah, Melina Park, Amy Lambert, uh, Tranda, all oh, of them, man. They had forevermore had the Sopranos. Golly, man. Look at that list of Sopranos, would you? All four of them, when they, you know, when they sing, should always be in the top five of the Sopranos. Wow. All right, so we're featuring Taranda Green tonight. So let me get uh, a song from Taranda's solo project here called Stronger. And uh, again, and this isn't, you know, I'm not, I'm not slamming her or the record companies or anything like that. And this isn't a, this isn't a, uh, a newsflash to anybody that knows me. I like her older stuff better. I'm just saying, I'm just an old guy and I love Southern gospel music, country gospel, bluegrass gospel, you know, Gold City, Cathedrals, Inspirations, Henson's, all of that. Primitive Quartet, right? But I'm giving Taranda Green Dean her due as one of the greatest soprano singers in the history of the world of all music. And that's a fact. And here we go. I'm going to have her sing a song called All I Need. From this album right here, Strong. Taranda Green Dean.
Now listen here. Don't you wish you could sing like that? <laughs> Good night. Range and power and diction and warmth and intonation, just all of it. You say, oh, they fixed her, her vocals. She was flat and sharp in some places. No, 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 no. I've, I've sat five feet off the stage when she sang many times, and no, no, no. <laughs> Spot on. So, uh, Taranda Green, whoa. That is some singing. Now you say, okay, now why are you, why are you spotlighting Taranda Green? Well, again, uh, looking at this uh, December 2010 issue of Singing News, <coughs> excuse me, my voice, um, this is an open letter from Taranda that was in it just after the death of Tony, and I thought, you know, I'm going to play some of her music, feature some Green's music, and um, so that's what I'm going to do. And now this is Facebook Live with Less Southern Gospel Music, which we've done, memorabilia. Showed you an old magazine, old vinyl there that we showed you of the greens. Check out this old vinyl. Look at that, boys and girls. That's going back. That is 1986, 34 years ago is what I'm saying. And so we've had some memorabilia, some memories. I, here's a memory. She was, uh, <coughs> this was in Freedom Hall in Louisville. And uh, she was, I forget now. They were either going to sing, or I think she may have been a presenter at the Singing News Fan Awards, or maybe she was up for, anyway, I mean, she was just all dolled up and everything, and she was uh, pregnant, and she asked if I would um, escort her from the from the hall where all of the tables uh, and products were and all that, all the way through then the halls of Freedom Hall down to the stage, and I said, I'm happy to, Taranda. Um, let me, and when I say she was pregnant, I'm talking about she was at least three years pregnant with a bus. Tranda, now I love you and everything, but I'm shooting straight with you. You were big. <laughs> and you were getting ready to give birth to a bus. And so, anyway, I was happy to do that. <laughs> You're not supposed to say, say stuff like that. I'm so crazy. Lord, Tranda, don't get a hold of me and, and, and be mad at me now. You were beautiful then. You're beautiful now. Everything is great. It's just wonderful. I'm just giving you this is a story. Yep, I was there when Tony proposed to her on stage, David. Okay, but now, okay, so Tony died. And, um, of course, her, her world came uh, crashing down around her. And I just got to thinking on the ministry side, because this is Facebook Live with less Southern Gospel Music Memorabilia Memories and ministry. I went to 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and uh, verse 26 stuck out. I'm going to read a couple other verses here. My voice is gone. I'm not going to be very long here, but the last enemy that shall be destroyed is what? Death. So at such time as we defeat that last enemy, what happens when you defeat your enemy and the last one goes down? You've won. You have victory. And so that moment where Tony took his last breath, that thing, that last thing that needed to be defeated, death, was then defeated. And he got the victory. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. Now let's just keep looking down here, though. Look at this. Verse, uh, let's go to uh, verse 55. Verse 55. First Corinthians chapter 15, where it says, O death, where is thy sting? <laughs> Isn't it great? O grave, where is your victory? The child of God has a completely different view of death. Death, that word, just the word is a morbid sounding, feeling, sounding kind of word, death. But for the child of God, when we conquer that last foe, that's our victory. And there's no sting for the child of God. Verse 56, the sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law. 
But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. We have victory as a child of God when we die in him, knowing him. Isn't that great news? I know when Tyrande wrote that open letter, she was no doubt sorrowful. I'm not at all making light of that. I can't imagine losing my spouse. I can't imagine losing my wife of almost 40 years. Cannot imagine that. But I'm telling you, for the child of God, it's victory. And it's that last foe that has to be defeated and go down is death. Now, I think we're going to be around when the trumpet blows and for the children of God change in the twinkling of an eye. Some of us may not experience death as we know it. As a matter of fact, again, I strongly feel that. I think he's coming. I think he's going to come before I go to bed tonight. Just what I think. You can disagree. It's okay. And when you get up in the morning, you can say, I told, told Les he was wrong. Yeah, you can. I know one thing. If I wasn't saved, I sure wouldn't roll the dice on it. I wouldn't roll the dice on going to bed tonight not knowing him. Mm -mm. But until then, let's, lo let's look at the very last verse, and we'll end with this. Verse 58 of 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Until then, listen to this. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable. Think of those words, steadfast, unmovable. Standing on the solid rock, clothed with the blood of the Lamb. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. Get to work, people. The trumpet is getting ready to sound. People are dying and going to hell. As I started reading this right here, there's been people fall down into hell just like that, just over these last few seconds. We need to be abounding in the work of the Lord for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain. But look at what else it says. It's not vain in vain in the Lord. When you're working for him, it's not vain. His word will not just, it, 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 it's going to come back with fruit. You may see that fruit tonight. You may see it tomorrow, you may see it next month, you may see it next year, you may not see it un until you get to heaven. And then you turn back around and you see some fruit that you never saw on this earth that's there because you shared the gospel with them. Mm -hmm. This, oh death, where is thy sting? Oh grave, where is thy victory? For the child of God, that last foe that's got to be defeated is death. For the child of God, it's just, it's just graduation day. <laughs> Isn't that good? Graduation day. Yes, sir. Amen, Brother Les. Somebody say amen. Okay. All right, let's look at some of this now. Let's see who we got on here with us. David Stewart says, amen, brother. Greg Davis is watching. Good to see you, Greg. David Stewart, yep, there when Tony proposed on stage. Well, not a cool deal. That was cool. That was, a, that, was, that was a memorable moment. Caleb, good to see you. Ron, good to see you. Mike Smith, good to see you. Patty Graham, beautiful song. Yes, ma'am. Andrew. Terry Carter, good evening, Les Butler. Good to see you, Terry. Hope you're doing well, my friend. David, she has a beautiful voice. Taranda Green Bean. What a singer. Hey, Luke Vaught of the Inspirations. Good to see you there, Luke. How you doing, my man? That boy can play anything that even comes close to being an instrument. It doesn't even have to be a real instrument. If it sits still long enough, he'll play it. Have I seen the video of Nicholas Wilkie singing uh, Based on Rainbow of Love, Andrew? Why, sure I have. Let me tell you, Nicholas can sure outdo me. I promise you that. You did a good job there, Nicholas. There's a rainbow of love. All that. It's a bass singer song, that's for sure. Well, folks, tell you what, I think it's going to be in the morning. 
but we're going to have Rebecca Peck on with me on Facebook Live with Les Southern Gospel Music, Memorabilia, Memories, and Ministry. And uh, it's going to be fantastic is what it's going to be. She and Diane Wilkinson wrote uh, the song that we just found out today is number four in the nation. And uh, wow, the Old Time Preachers Quartet were just simply blown away by it. And um, very thankful for it. We really are. I sang myself happy. You know, I was talking to, to my wife. I told her, I said, you ain't going to believe this. <coughs> number four. Number four in the country. I don't have the Conrad virus. Sinus. This happens to me twice a year, every year for nearly 60 years. It's all good. Um, but uh, I told her, I said, man, number four, can you believe this? And she reminded me that she and my daughter Amber said, that's a hit song. And it's not, I didn't argue with her. Yeah, it was a hit song. They, they both said it should should have been our first single. And it wasn't. And maybe uh, your old buddy Les made a mistake. Because I make mistakes. Pretty much. Pretty much every day. Pretty much before I get out of bed in the morning, I've made some kind of mistake. But anyway, so uh, they were right. And, uh, and so my wife was telling me, she was saying, you know, maybe why it's taken off right now is with all this junk going on, people want to hear some happy songs. And I stopped to myself and I said, Self, your wife probably onto something there. <laughs> so as always, Bev's right. She's just always right, period. Over 38 years worth of being right. No, over 37 years worth of being right, almost 38 years. And um, you know what? You're probably right. In this horrific time that we're living in with this coronavirus and, and, and looting and and, and marching and buildings and burning down and people shooting and killing each other and man we need some happy songs and Rebecca and Diane wrote a happy song and the old time preachers quartet is happy they recorded it <laughs> I sang myself happy go into our store and buy it it'll bless you I think go to oldtimepreachersquartet.com okay tomorrow Diane it's going to be good going to feature some Diane Wilkinson music that we've recorded beyond that song. I'm going to talk about some songs that she uh, wrote that is going to be on my new album. And good night. Whew. Man, did she write some songs for my record. I am so blessed to have these songs. I, I don't even have the words for it. Mm. Thank you. Thank you, Rebecca. Tomorrow with Rebecca Peck. See you then. Lord willing.